Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to the second full playthrough of the newest update, and of course, the newest DLC, Megacorp. And of course, we need to do an actual megacorporation before we do anything else. Today, we are playing as the friendly Lone Legion. As long as you will always pay us back, we will pay you back with friendship, loyalty, happiness, and various other buzzwords. Essentially, We'll make you stronger if you make us stronger. It's a nice, loving relationship. Now, we are fanatic xenophiles, which means our trade value is fantastic, and all other empires will like us at least a little bit. We are also egalitarian because this will give us more specialist output, it will also give us more influence in the form of faction influence gain, and honestly, I very rarely play egalitarian, so we may as well do it now. We are free traders, giving us even more trade value, along with branch office value, and we have brand loyalty. This mega corporation has fostered a great sense of brand loyalty among its internal customer base. Its catchy corporate slogans can be recited by nearly everyone. Also, the word it's, I couldn't pronounce them for some reason, because that's how good I am at the words. It's a good job I'm now leading a mega corporation. The universe is not in the, the best of places, admittedly. So, how are we going to be playing this? Essentially, what we want is as many friends as possible. We want branch offices absolutely everywhere, and we are going for a federation-style victory with lots and lots of focus on tech and unity. We are rapid breeders, and we are intelligent, which means we are going to get loads of research very, very quickly, along with loads of exploitation of the worlds we get. Since we are a megacorp, we don't particularly want to go that much over our admin cap and we are going to focus on worlds rather than systems so we will have a few worlds which are just in the middle of nowhere or perhaps even in friendly territory of an ally but essentially we want more tech than everyone else in addition to this we are deviants and we are sedentary now this isn't as powerful as it used to be in terms of the weakest of the negatives but it's still pretty weak in comparison to some of the others. And honestly, I really want all of the other negatives to go nowhere near our empire. Now, I was tempted to not go with Deviants. The reason is we are going to rely a lot on our factions for our influence game. But if I want to swap later on into a different playstyle, perhaps swapping out Egalitarian or Xenophile for something else, that really does help. So although it is a negative and will weaken us quite a lot... I don't mind it as much, so we will be leaving that as it is. We are the Raxar. That was one of the automatic names, and I just really liked it, so we are sticking with that. We are going with the Reptilian Cities, and we have the Slick Corporation voice. Our goal is to create a galactic system that maximizes innovative self-actualization and redefines future-proof solutions for every stage of a customer's life. Megacorp, we're with you every step of the way. I still find this the scariest of all the voices, I've got to be honest. It's just so terrifyingly corporate with no soul at all. And I think that really does fit this particular playstyle. Our flag is, well, you can see there, we are going with the reptile ships. And our ruler is currently Chairman Glum. Look at his sad little face. I think these fellows just look like the perfect megacorp species. They just look so... So serious and so not fun. Like, they would m make the worst parties, but the best businessmen. You can give him a hat! Well, we have now reached a level of Stellaris I didn't think we could ever reach. Yep, we are keeping the hat, and we are continuing. So that's it. Our whole point is to find as many friends as possible, to keep them fully stocked with all of our lovely branch offices, which will benefit them and will certainly benefit us. And then by the end, we should have enough tech and enough federation power that we can hopefully defeat the final enemy. So the final enemy will be a strength... Five crisis strength. Now I am leaving the regular mid game and end game start years because I am still learning the new patch. I am still learning the DLC, and I don't want to rush too much. And honestly, crisis strength five is already bloody terrifying. We we will of course be on grand admiral for our difficulty, and with that. Let's begin. Oh, actually, before we start, I will also mention, as usual, I will not be playing with Iron Man mode since the game at the moment is not in the most stable state and I need the ability to reload saves if bugs or exploits happen like they actually did in the previous full playthrough. So, we begin. 
Here we are on the left side of the galaxy, so let us begin. So to begin with, as usual, I do want loads upon loads of science vessels. Now normally this is purely for all of the lovely, lovely anomalies, but honestly right now, I also just want to find people very quickly. I'm tempted to make a science ship just for exploring rather than surveying. Okay, let's get some more bonus research, that's always good. More pop growth is always good, and more research, as previously stated, is always grand. Now... In the Grand Bank, I would like the corporate culture site quite quickly. Wow! Really? That is really good for our empire. The holy energy credit be praised. Okay, we're going to start off with expansion. Not only will that give us some more population growth, it will also increase our admin cap and just make getting new planets a little bit easier. Speaking of population growth, I'm also going to go ahead into food policy and go with nutritional plentitude. This means I will be losing food very quickly, but everyone will be very happy and will grow even faster. I want as many populations as fast as possible on every single one of our planets. We need consumer goods and we need research, and I want both of those incredibly soon. Wow, that's a really good system. Nice. Well, there's something different. I did not know that high gravity now gives plus two maximum districts. So despite the fact that this is a 16, it's actually an 18 in terms of districts, but everything costs more and habitability suffers. Loads of science, though. Well, clearly that will eventually be a science world, but certainly not a focus on our efforts, at least for the time being. Ooh, a 20 ocean world. That will be the focus of our efforts. Yoink, thank you very much. The new ocean world is absolutely glorious. It has two rare features, one of which is an isolated valley, which will allow us to eventually build an alien zoo. Now, I can't remember exactly what the alien zoo does now since 2.2, but I remember it being really, really powerful. And just interesting, honestly. Market outlier identified. Lovely. Assistant Investment opportunity considered. being seized. Welcome to the Corporation. Welcome to the Legion. Slowly. I never do look at the colony ships. Colonial I actually don't know how any of them look outside of this one right now. Maybe they look really cool, and I'm sorry for the art designers who made that, and then I've never really paid any attention. So, one thing I need to do soon is I'm going to turn our original shipyard into a trade station. This way, we can grab all three of these systems' trade value without the need of additional stations. And then we can just put a regular station here for the shipyard, and that will also help to protect our... What's it called again? The Interstellar Assembly. Which will make people like us more and also increase immigration. More people! Now, since I'm so rarely the good guys, I didn't even know that Utopian Abundance has quite a unique little thing here. Unemployed populations have normal happiness and produce unity and research points. Well, isn't that interesting? So even those who are unemployed are still contributing to our glorious legion. I'm tempted to do this just because that bonus happiness will be so, so good in terms of getting more resources. The problem is that's a lot of consumer goods. The workers are going from 0 0.25 each to 1. The specialists 0 0.5 also to 1. We could trial it for a while. We just need to make sure to keep an eye out for consumer goods. Okay, everyone be happy, you're welcome! We are the friendliest of legions! Oh my god, that hurt my money. I am <laughs> reducing friendliness as soon as possible. Friendliness is too expensive. Why? Oh, dear. whoa, look at that stability, though. Oh, but that's also giving us wealth. And we have 666 consumer goods very briefly then, like it was a sign. I'm not quite sure how to take that sign, but still. I guess I'll have to do more civilian industries. I was hoping to have our first research labs, though, now. But saying that, we are going to have focused worlds for that later. Right now, it's just setting up all the planets. But, hmm, not sure how to do this. 
Maybe it would be best just to have more civilian industries, that means we can also have our luxuries distributed up permanently, which is really powerful as well. As long as we're getting unity, I'm happy enough. Sure, for now. More consumer goods. Let's keep our people happy. Let's see if kindness is the true way to happiness. Oh yeah, we now have an unemployed person, which is giving us two of each research and a unity. You know, that's not too bad, considering a single researcher will give us, yeah, 6.5 of each, but of course no unity. That's not terrible. Hmm. I wonder if there's a whole playstyle which is just pure population using the unemployed giving bonus science, bonus unity. Don't think it's possible because of the sheer Future consumer goods cost, but it's a thought. Greetings, caravanners. What do you offer us on this fine day? Oh. Yeah, that's just for orbital bombardment, and that's far too much. Sorry. Market outlier identified. I just realized that Deviants, being one of our species' negatives, actually really fits our empire. Since we are giving so much freedom to everyone, that means everyone has complete freedom of thought and complete freedom of speech. People are going to deviate very quickly from the norm, because there are so many ideas and ideologies they can follow. That's right, I just logicked that, and that makes sense to me. Good. Outlier identified. Where are our new friends, and where are habitable planets? Come on, give me more ocean worlds. Instantly, evil thoughts creep into my psyche. So, hello there, you lovely little primitives. Hmm, how would you like to work for us? Ooh, you are xenophobic, though. That would make you difficult to integrate into our society, but still. Well, maybe we'll just use you for research. One of the two. Ruxari, how delightful! We haven't expected to encounter you for a few centuries yet. Personally, I thought you would wipe yourselves out long before leaving your gravity well, but I'm glad to be proven wrong. We wish for nothing but to be friends, Zikmok. You are some creepy looking observers. I think they see into your soul. And your pet soul. And the soul of a water bottle. A system has been surveyed. Yay! They're instantly patronizing though. Good! I like us. Give us stuff! We like stuff. You can consider it a loan. You see, we do that. A good one of our colonies has finished being created. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Let's grab some more food and let's help them along. Research actualized. Um, not too great for us, but still. I don't care about ships. It's going to be a long time before we actually build a proper fleet, so even though this isn't great, eh, it's free stuff. We have finished expansion, and now we are going to grab either One Vision or Technological Ascendancy. Later on, we will be grabbing Universal Transactions, meaning that commercial packs no longer cost influence, which is lovely, and our branch offices are much cheaper, which is good, because no one is nearby, and the cost is based on distance. So, for now, though, One Vision, since we won't really be having much science for quite some time. Okay, not long until we have our first new person there. Which is great. Um, identified. Going to need some more food for quite some time because of the extra cost. Though, to be fair, we're also going to need more minerals for more consumer goods, for more science and unity. So, um, let's go with food for now. We have found a dimensional portal on this world, which is giving us 20 unity. Uh, by unity, of course, I meant to say physics. Identified. Still, science, good. Do you want to give us some stuff, please? Scaling complete. What is it, child? Please stop staring at me. Suddenly I'm complete. thinking sedentary was a little bit worse than I originally thought. So, loads of immigration from our main planet means that our colonies are very, very quickly getting underway. On the downside, our main planet is hardly producing new populations at all for the time being. But still, the faster these are no longer just regular colonies, the faster they can grow by themselves, which is very, very beneficial to us. One, two. Oh, look, we can even grab this trade value. No, we can't. That's not the home world that is. That's a shame. Well, once I upgrade, I can anyway. Oh, there is an asteroid. Let's go and deal with that, please. 
Upscaling complete. Look at its speed! Research actualized. Whoosh. Oh. The rift is closed. No more goodies for us. Market outlier identified. Flak versus asteroids. Well, asteroid. And harmony. That's going to take a very long time. A system has been surveyed. And you can go on and help out these fellows. Still no neighbors yet. This would have been a perfect start for any wide playstyle, but no, I'm going to play the tall playstyle today. Instantly alone in the galaxy. Upscaling complete. Go away already. Oh dear. How cute. Completed. The Null Void. So that is where the rift leads to. Oh, that's good. We are slowly getting dark matter, and we have the research for the Null Void Beam. Now, I believe that's a rare weapon. Yep. Plus 400% shield damage, but then terrible versus armor and hull. Interesting, but I'd rather have that first. We have a new leader, which was our original physics Market researcher. Identified. Wow, all of you are utterly useless. Um, don't have the research to keep up, sorry, the energy to keep on doing this, so for now, I'll just put you there. I'll change you out very soon. So, our glorious new leader. Market fee minus 5%. Ooh, trade value plus. That's nice. More energy and less market fee. Defense platforms and science ships. Oh, good. Anomaly research speed. That's not too bad, actually. You're gonna do just fine. Now, let's get some more energy and let's get some better scientists, shall we? Greetings, caravanners. What do you have for us today? You want one of our science ships and you'll give us a deodorizer deployment. I don't know what that... Okay, here it goes. Uh, One-time delivery to a single colony. Anti-odor effects are guaranteed for at least 80 years. Increases immigration pull and pop growth from immigration pull. I'm going to keep that, so I will accept that. There you are. And I'll use that once I have a migration treaty with an with another empire. Now, let's make ourselves a new science vessel since we just lost one. Oh, hello, these two old worlds. So, we have these fellows over here on their tomb world, then we have another tomb world over here, and these are the fellows who essentially nuked each other into, well, less than ideal situations. We could uplift them, we could help them, we could take them over, but most likely eventually we'll just have research stations. I will likely take over this section over here and then not much else. Ooh, lovely. Now that's a lovely event. Let's open that. And then we can give our people a genetic bonus. A system has been surveyed. Utopian dream. Population, amenities usage reduced by 10%. Lovely. Our stability will be really, really high in the end. Now, currently, our consumer goods are taking a dive, and that's because I'm focusing a lot on unity and just making sure all the planets have a nice base. Alien box open. So I think I'm going to go with the red solution. This will allow me to have... I believe it's less housing usage. Though, honestly, I don't even know what the new green and blue solutions are. Blue used to be lifespan. Green used to be habitability. Ooh, habitability would still be great. But less housing would be amazing. Let's go with green. Let's risk it. What do we get? Bio-adaptability, so I believe it's still adaptability then overall, and yeah, plus 5% habitability everywhere. Well, that's great. Less upkeep for everyone. That was almost certainly the correct choice. 
Now, what do we do with you? We could begin indoctrination, turning you slowly into us, or we could get more society research. We could even enlighten them, although for some reason I'm not allowed to do that, which is interesting. Why am I not allowed to do that exactly? Go to policies, native enlightenment, it's allowed. Um, unrestricted... Okay, I'm not too sure why I'm not allowed to do that. Honestly, I don't think I'd do that anyway, but still. In fact, aggressive observation. Let's get loads of society from them, shall we? Potential market survey complete. Soon we can start specializing our planets, which will be great. We need at least one world completely focused on consumer goods, then, then at least one on science. Of course, this will be the science one. Interloper, heed this message. We are the guardians of Xanarm. Evading competitive fleet. Hello, guardians. Ooh. I'll have that from you eventually, lads. But for now, you need to go over here, and this will be one of our first little islands. Because that is a 24 size planet with no tile blockers and the sea of consciousness. Increased habitability and loads of bonus research. Yeah, we need that world desperately. Still haven't found anyone though, which is good. Establishing the branch office. Lovely, so straight away 19 energy. What are you? Ah, you're giving us one of the probes, one of the events. Sure. Outlier identified. So next up, we need to get a little bit more minerals, and then we can have the Amusement Megaplex, which will give them some amenities, making them more stable, and will give us an additional 10 energy. See? We make them stronger, they make us stronger, everyone wins. Now, I'm fairly certain I just got a brand new leader because we just abducted one. Yep, there we are. Whoa. A level 6 spark of genius. Um. There we are. Hello there, glorious empire. Seems like you're going to be friendly with us as well. Lovely. And migration treaty will be underway. First of all, though, let's have a quick look, see what you're like. You will disrupt us in terms of our factions, but... If we have enough consumer goods, which we will soon, I can make sure that our immigration pull is also very, very high. Very strong natural physicist, deviance. Hmm. Later. Now, of course, the problem with doing this is that we get this negative modifier. Total Empire Sprawl, 79, multiplied by 120% due to Empire Cohesion. And that's because of all the gaps and such. So what to do about that? We could grab all this. I mean, there are some really good systems here and then just leave it that at that and then have this weird shape for our empire. It would reduce the cohesion problem, but of course, every single new system will increase the empire sprawl by itself anyway. Upscaling complete... Okay, I've just spent 200 influence on the land of opportunity, increasing our immigration pull by 100%. So you there. Migration treaty, yes please. That should hopefully increase our growth quite a lot. I'm hoping. We'll soon see. Our people of course will also want to go to them, which is the problem. And you, one of those. Finally, we're building some research stations as soon as this is done. Now that we've grabbed Harmony, we are going into Prosperity, which will give us merchants, mining station output, and loads of bonuses to our specialists and especially our city districts. This will make our planets far better later on. Now, one negative I completely forgot about, and this is my fault for still learning this update, is this. With our Empire Sprawl, we have Empire Cohesion, which is currently affecting us. And that's because we're a very thin empire, which looks bizarre, 
and we also have this gap over here. I'm not quite sure which one of the two is causing the problem, but either way, I need to fix that because it's giving us a 20% extra bonus to our Empire Sprawl, which in turn is making everything else cost way more. So I do need to fix that somewhat Outlier soon. Identified. For now, if it is this planet, it's still worth it because otherwise we'd have to have all of these systems, which would be loads of points, but we may as well have the systems. I mean, look, energy, minerals, science. There's all good stuff there. Don't really want to get much larger than we are now, though. So eventually grabbing all this, maybe grabbing this section, maybe grabbing this section. Same with that, and that's really it. Still learning, especially how to play tall with the new update. Actualized. All nearby empires love us. And we return that love with profit. Colonial enterprise established. Lovely. Extra population growth, that's great. Although the planetary capital is also amazing. But yeah, I really want the extra growth rate, please. Okay, the only empire that I don't currently have a branch office with is you. Why not? Just energy? Lovely. That is fine. Five hundred more? Well, let's just sell some stuff then, shall we? And ta-da! More glorious profit for us, and of course we are making your planets even more sta- Whoa, that is a stable planet! How are you so stable? Lots of clerks. Yep, you also have resource silos which are further increasing that. Well then, that's a lovely planet to live on. And once we have the minerals, I'll go ahead and increase the value of your Potential planet even further. Like right now. We are now going to study the living sea. It calls to us, and we will call back. Okay, so one of our scientists wishes to go towards the ocean, even though they're currently on one of our ships. You know what? Sure. Go and talk to the ocean. Also, apparently, they're alleging that the ocean is talking to them with the voice of lost loved ones. Well, good luck. I am now commissioning art pieces. Because these are really, really powerful. How many am I allowed? I will literally keep on buying them. Okay, there we are. And I will now become your patron as well. Decisions. There we are. The art monuments. Immigration, pull, and extra amenities. Didn't I just purchase loads? There we go. For a second there, I thought that wasn't working correctly, and I was very, very sad. You get some art. You get some art. You, on the other hand, don't get any art, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, too bad. Ooh, you need some more amenities, so let's give you some clerks. Same of you, actually, and in a second you'll run out of jobs, so let's give you some more clerks, and then everyone is nice and happy. Actually, yet yeah, there we are, your amenities have just been increased because of the whole art thing. Lovely. Still, though. The research into the Sea of Consciousness has now given us this, lots of lovely, lovely research, and psionic theory. It turns out that it's a giant neural network. Which is really, really interesting. Fantastic. Research actualized. Really, really fantastic. Hello, new contact. Would you like some bribes? You would love some bribes. Sadly, still can't make a commercial pact. Oh, distance is thirty. If I should have checked where you were. Well, at least we're friends. Would be nice if we could do anything, though. The birth of the galactic market. And of course, we are going to try and make our bank the head of this market. As soon as we have the energy, which will be less than a month away. Strong. Excellent. 
Well, that's a familiar face, but not quite as happy as we are. Fanatical purifiers. And look how spread the empires are this time. Well, we're beating some on science now, at least. We're finally specializing our planets properly. Modifying our people for their own good, of course. So, we're going to make it so that they are conservationists and thus consume less consumer goods, which will be lovely. Oh, we could get more unity. Um... Unity is pretty good. We are finally getting there with science. We are now beating all other empires, or at least all other regular empires now in science. So everything is starting to mature and become way more powerful. Be nice to remove deviance though as well. There's so many things I want. Less, less housing usage is great. Bonus science is great. Bonus unity is great. But for now, you know actually our economy is more than strong enough to deal with the negative consumer goods. So let's just go with bonus unity. And apply that template to all. And I'm afraid, people who are currently migrating to us, I will be editing you as well later. <laughs> no one gets away with it, I'm afraid. So what do I want next? Uh, could put down some more civilian industries here. Or some more research. It'll further our consumer good debt, but research is research and we're finally getting there. Sure. And more clerks for all. It turns out that our Empire Sprawl modifier was coming purely from this section because we had so many of these which were connecting to multiple. Then we had this one thin section here, so now that's solved, that's great. I'm going to grab these as well and try and make the Empire a more unified section anyway. It's going to affect our Empire Sprawl, but I don't really mind. All these lovely base resources are really needed. Also, now that these colonies are finally starting to become a bit more powerful, it's time to add some trade stations and such around here to simply transfer everything over. Well, we don't need a trade station if we put the station right here, but still. We have finally found the homeworld. Lovely. Nice chunk of unity there, which finishes off prosperity. And now we can grab mind over matter. I think we're going to go with the psionic, the psionic root, rather. Psionic. It's like a psychic sonic. Anyway, there we go. Beautiful. So what has that done then to our people exactly? It means now we get plus 5% research and plus 5% energy from our jobs. That is lovely. Also, I'm now sending out a new colony ship because there's a lovely 24 world right here. These fellows won't like it particularly, but that's fine. Now an 88 energy here. In fact, 95 energy total. Not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, let's not make people our enemies, shall we? More fellows are being found. So now we have yet another research agreement. And these are yet another megacorp. If we declare war, we can go with seize assets, which means we can start taking their branch offices, which I believe all round here. Interesting. And apparently I'm on very good terms with both members of this federation. At some point, I'll probably end up being asked to join them. Or at least be an associate. The Xeno Outreach Agencies, plus immigration pull, plus trade value. That's not terrible. But saying that, there's also this, and I really do want this. Plus one civic slot. But that's more interesting. But that's just far too powerful. Well, that's interesting. A racket has joined our legion. Now, this is special because, first of all, they are already egalitarian, which is awesome. But they have tomb world preference. And they are indeed psionic. We can now inhabit every single planet within our borders at a decent percentage. Now that's very, very interesting indeed. We could suddenly have loads more planets, and although that will of course increase our admin cap, sorry, our empire sprawl, I think it's worth it. Because just planets. Everywhere planets. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to be making them like this. They will be adaptive and conservationist. 
Then we'll give that to all three of them, which means then when we populate these planets, they'll be much cheaper to keep. I don't know if this is the right thing to do, I just know it's the more fun thing to do. Situation log revived. We now have the ability to improve our government. So, what do we have? We have franchising, which will allow us to have less Empire Sprawl for our branch offices, which is very nice, considering at the moment that is plus 14. So actually, that's not as amazing as I first thought. Media conglomerates will allow us to have our people being happier, which is also nice. But then we do have... where are you? One of the more interesting ones here. This one just upgrades our admin cap by 10. It's not much, but that will make our tech cheaper, in addition to our traditions. And I think that might be what I go with right now. Okay, yep. Private prospectors. There we go. Colonial enterprise upsizing. Also, I may be colonizing every single planet within our borders. Our main trade hub is now being upgraded even further, which means only one, two, three planets will be out of its range. So we're only losing trade value on three planets. That's not bad. And considering at the moment we don't really have a navy to patrol or the ability to make too many stations. Actually, I kind of could. It might be worth it then to finally put down a station here and here. That way we can get all that lovely trade value. Then just have some stations to protect them since I don't particularly want to make a navy yet. At the moment, we have all of our friends to protect us. It's a weird playstyle I'm going with right now. Colonies, colonies everywhere. Oh dear. Go, science ship, go! Outrun them! Well, it tried. Our science is now doing incredibly well. Everything is starting to snowball beautifully. And I might need to get some sleep soon. It's like 3am, but I'm still going. Behold the power of Stellaris. Research actualized. Now this is arguably one of the most powerful buildings in the whole branch office system. With this single building, our trade value, sorry, the trade value of this planet will be increased by 5%. And all of my planets will get a plus 10% to their amenities. Or amenities, depending on how you want to say it. Either way, that's really, really good. As you can imagine, the stability bonus for us. And this stacks, by the way. So I'm tempted to go to our other planets and swap out one of these for one of these. I'm very tempted, actually. We have loads of energy, so you know what? Sure, let's have three of those. Makes our friends richer, and makes our planets far more stable, and thus far more useful for all other resources. Yay, they're our friends again. Good. In fact, very good. Gases, 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 planets. Nice. Although there isn't much footage during this playthrough, I am learning a lot. And thank you very much for that lovely, lovely That's injection of consumer goods. So many colonies, all of them with growth and courage and luxuries distributed. Although I think I could use the luxuries a little bit better. We have so many species now that almost every single planet type I can easily inhabit. And it's going incredibly well. Somehow, I still only have two factions. So, that's pretty nice. Interesting. Maybe I should have focused on this a little bit earlier to make sure everyone's happy. But still, everything is going just fine. Although we are really hurting for consumer goods. And that's because I'm now completely focused on unity and science. Which is really, really rocketing ahead. I could have done this a lot better. I've learned a lot of things though. I think next time I play a tall build, a tall playstyle... I'm going to be a lot better at this. Research actualized. That's interesting. Why are you in the middle? Everyone has overwhelming force, but no one comes close to our glorious technology. And it's only increasing with every passing year. But soon we really do need to build ourselves a fleet. It's amazing how little I've done in terms of that. The Ministry of Production. 
Now that is something truly beautiful. Plus 15% from our metallurgists and our artisans. Which is good because I'm now converting two worlds into alloy foundries. It's about time the bank has its own military force, don't you think? Our people shall transcend. The Great Awakening. Lovely. So now we are all psychics, which make us incredibly dangerous. Really do need more leaders of our original species, though. That's got to be said. Well, it's time to begin breaching the Shroud. Now, I believe this has been changed since before. I can't quite remember, but still. It begins. Do not need all of those. Definitely want that. Upscaling complete. Our food and minerals are suffering, but nothing else is. We are definitely on the road to a very profitable future. And I have a tiny little fleet right now because a few pirates spawned. Now moving over to diplomacy. This way we can have a base trade protection, trade value increase, market fee reduction, and we'll also get more population growth from immigration, which currently is actually doing incredibly well. So, that's definitely our next choice. Our food is suffering quite badly though, but thankfully, because of our huge income of energy, alloys, and consumer goods? Yes, I remember the name of that. It's easy enough to just purchase every time we run out. We're too good for the fields. Let the other empires deal with that. Got to love some dangerous tech. Oh, hello! Resort Worlds! This world is set aside as a peaceful resort world, attracting tourists and visitors from far away. To preserve the planet's natural beauty, construction on the surface is severely limited. So what exactly does this do? Well... This is amazing. It gives plus 100% habitability to the planet for pretty much everyone, but then all of my other planets get plus 15% amenities per one of these created. Yes, we are making one of these. Oh, Shroud. Interesting. Attempt to communicate with the presence, a powerful one which is sleeping. Nope, sadly that did not work, and our fellow has died. Well, we tried, you know, we tried. Let's create ourselves a resort world. There we are. So this is our resort. One clerk, job per two populations. And we can build... Huh, we can actually build quite a lot. It's just a matter of the fact we can't build any districts, which means we're going to need to keep on building luxury residences. And then upgrading them, otherwise we'll have no housing. Thankfully, of course, anyone who is unemployed, we still have the science and unity from them, since we're still increasing our growth rate. So I wonder if this stacks then. If I have more than one resort world, will this happen? Well, will this work with everyone? So let's see. This world here is getting plus 15% from resort world. Let's see if I can convert this one here also into a resort world. Apparently our people are going to love the ice planets. Or is it only one? Ah, we can only have one. I should have rechecked here before destroying stuff. Okay, that makes sense, although this will be a mining world in the end anyway, so... No need to make that many. So it is, a voice whispers, and so it shall always be. So, let's see then. Increased happiness? Thank you very much! Our people delight in our faith. And our glorious income. Glorious mega engineering is on its way. Soon we're going to be able to rebuild the interstellar assembly, which is good. Research because now it's time to start making our federation. It's time to start taking center stage on this lovely little galaxy of ours. Also, I'm now doing repeatables finally, which is very That's good indeed. Complete. 
as our science continues to increase. On many planets, I have absolutely no work at all, just purely specialists. Research wow. Actualized. Lovely. More energy is always good. Uh, don't particularly care about that. I'm just going to finally get this out of the way because, well, it was in the way the whole time. You are going to eventually be a new science world, so I do need some new ones, so let's continue with that, shall we? All well and good. 101 amenities. Yeah, we have some pretty happy people here. 95% stability. That is lovely. Null void beam, wormhole travel, much better. Thank you. More food would be great because we are just going through food so quickly. Thankfully, though, we're earning so much money, it doesn't really matter all that much. How long until our next... Okay, very, very soon. We, we can do a whole federation thing, which is lovely. Lots of lovelies and also lots of stammering at the moment. It's now very early in the AM, and I'm very soon to call it a day. This is actually day two, on a side note. The resort world is interesting when you have people getting this extra bonus here. Lovely. Federation. So... Who could we federate? Not you, why not? War of Aggression. Well, if we change that, you will instantly join us. That's one. In fact, the only reason we can't get in with these fellows is because of that. Yep, War Philosophy allows... War no, minus 50, that's interesting. Despite the fact our opinion is so good. Okay, let's change it, just so we see what actually happens. So... Policies, War Philosophy, let's just change it to Liberation Wars for now. Interesting. So you will now join us, but that's only one. Would you join us? No, because of the opposite problem. Hmm. <laughs> We're going to need to figure out a way to get as many people into our federation as possible. And I've got a horrible feeling that we are going to have to wage some wars of ideology. Get people to think like we do. The problem is though, if we go to war with a war of ideology... Won't that change them into a mega corporation? Maybe we can't even do that. Okay, you. Let's say we went to war. No, I can't check that because we have all these things on us. Um, yeah, not too sure where to go from here, honestly. And so diplomacy is finished. Ooh, world shaper. Allow us to change our worlds into Gaia worlds. That is pretty darn nice. Oh, Xeno compatibility. Now, this is an interesting one. This allows the different species on our planet to crossbreed. It grants 20% bonus to population growth speed on any planet with at least two different species, which is all of our planets. And it also allows the creation of half species that take the poor trait from one parent and then mix the traits, giving plus one maximum trait points and plus one maximum traits. Also, a huge immigration pull increase. You know what? Sure. Well, at least it's going to increase our growth rate by quite a bit. Lovely. A Federation fleet. It's been so long since I've had one of these. Lovely. Definitely don't want to join still. Ah, the whole wars of aggression Research thing. Actualized. Now, my other member, this fellow, he really, really wouldn't like it if we did the whole wars of aggression, would he? Since I would like a couple more members. And well, these cats would be fantastic. That means this whole section here, like a good third of the galaxy would be under our Federation rule already if we can get them to join. And they would join, 
if we would allow wars of aggression. Hmm. Anyway, for now, we do have a new Ascension perk, and we could do this, the Arcology Project. Start turning some of our planets into just powerhouses. More housing, resource production, and pop growth. Just for the main world, so the home world and some of our tech worlds would become very, very powerful. Deal. Absolutely. Now, if I recall correctly, this is a very expensive thing to do. Am I right? Oh boy, I'm right. So, 20,000 minerals. Also, I need to change all of our districts into housing districts, which thankfully isn't too difficult. And honestly, minerals aren't that expensive. Hmm, we could do that soon. Ooh, the Vault of Acquisitions. Oh, admin cap increase. That's so nice. But I want that more. No, I don't. Admin cap, please. Okay, now we just need to convert all of these into city districts. Shroud, grant us your blessing. Maybe. Ooh. What was that? I just had the chance to research. Psionic shields! Yes. Yes, please. Uh, first finish for the last thing you're doing, though. Although, that does take a type of resource I currently can't even exploit. Scientific revolution plus 20% research speed. I have just changed it to allow unrestricted wars. Welcome to the Federation, my long-standing allies. Upscaling complete. Glorious. So, now is there a way to make it so we can see our federations, please? It would be lovely. Opinion, AI attitude, neighbor, empire, unions. There we are. So all of us are now the same color. For we are one. Now our allies keep on making more and more ships for the federation. That's lovely. Thank you. So kind. Also, I've just realized we're still the default name of Grand League. I was so focused on how it's going to work, I, com I completely forgot. Hmm, maybe it would be good if we actually named our Federation. Honestly, just us three, that is more than enough to do our next goal, which honestly will be to kill a fallen empire before the year 2400. Our Federation fleets can have up to 235 force count. Lovely. Research actualized. And whoever's the strongest member of the Federation always keeps control. Which of course means I always keep control. Both sides of the Federation are now sending in their ships. And you know what's glorious? On one side we have plants, on the south side we have mammals, and here we have reptiles. Our fleet is made of three different type of ships, which looks awesome. And I'll showcase that in a second when they're all nice and together. Finally, let's begin the conversion into the Arcology Project. That's going to take a very long time, but when it's done, our main lovely world will be something truly glorious. Extra housing, resource production, pop growth, everything will be increased here. And then we're going to do the same to our tech worlds and our industrial worlds. So, something interesting I've noticed. The cat people have been usurped by the rackets. So, yep, yeah, that's a thing now. And also, the rackets are our main species. If we go over here, go to amount, right at the bottom you'll see, ta-da, we have the rackets. Also, now our Xeno compatibility is now fully underway, and we are getting these lovely crosses with really weird different results. Sadly, of course, they don't have unique portraits each time, but still, it means we're getting loads of immigration from all of the empires we have migration treaties with, and of course, just from planet to planet, and our population growth is skyrocketing. We are getting very powerful very, very quickly now. And of course, 
we're still getting ships from our neighbors constantly. There's one there, there's one there, there's at least four on the way. In fact, way more than four on the way from our allies to the north. And as we get additional naval capacity, we will just get more and more into our Federation fleet. And I haven't even started building my normal fleet yet. The future's looking good. It's looking... Megacorp. Research actualized. Now it's time to call to the Shroud once more. Also, we could start to assimilate all of our new people. Making them all into psychers, which would make our entire population a lot more powerful. But for now, we simply talk to the Shroud. It's like talking to the Hand, but far more efficient. Okay. Obviously, it's this one. Yeah, I wanted nothing to happen. I did exactly what I wanted to do there. Ooh, food from jobs. That would be good. Uh, yeah. Though, lead a level cap plus one. Yeah, that's probably better. We're just buying our food anyway. And there we are. Finally, let's begin work on the interstellar assembly. It's going to be lovely. Everyone will live within our empire. Because we're actually nice to them. Except for this world, apparently, which definitely needs more amenities. Here, let's, let's go with the easy, perhaps not most efficient option. Hollow theaters for all. Because who doesn't love a good Hollow Suite program? Oh, look at the Federation fleet growing all by itself. Oh, it's so cute. Now we're going into the domination tree, because honestly, I just want this. Workplace motivators. Resource output from workers and slaves increased by 5%. Then we can also get some more housing, which is really, really lovely. Our governors can be more powerful, and our ruler can also be more powerful. Overall, it's just a really nice thing to get, with supremacy last. That means that at the moment, our scientific revolution has just went away, which is a real shame. Although honestly, we're not exactly struggling for science, and that's still increasing day by day. Which I'm very, very happy with indeed. So this is one of our tech worlds, and of course we're just going to put down another tech building as soon as we have the minerals for it. Now, how far is our mega structure? Shouldn't be too far off. Nope, not too far off at all. Almost halfway. Everyone will love us. We are now sending our Federation fleet to defeat the defenders of Zanam. Or Zanam, or whatever this planet's called, either way, the planet I want. These fellows. So they really don't like shields. Okay, so if we had shields, we'd be much, much better. Well, we do have shields, but if we focused on shields. Anyway, oh mighty shroud, will you aid us on this day? Ooh. Can I have an avatar? No. Sadly, I cannot. For the glory of the Legion. Competitors engaged. Excuse me, but you have a Gaia world I desperately want. I pause for a second, what's that? Hmm, that's going to be a bit of research, I imagine. And... And is that a cracked world over there? Yes, it is. A broken world, in fact. Lovely. Well done, everyone. You've all made me, as the founding member, very, very proud. Now go and survey that as fast as possible, please. Because we want to grab this before our neighbours do. We're friends, but I want this stuff more than they do. I now realise I did actually get the psionic avatar. I just wasn't paying attention. I will call him Fluffy. The Grand Bank has finished. Okay, let's take a look see at that as soon as we grab this. Thank you very much. So around Lone Star. That's obviously the wrong one. Try again, Lathrix. There we go. We now have the Grand Bank. 
in its fully city form. It looks like a really weird Pokeball briefly there. Absolutely glorious. How do we have unemployment? Okay, it's one of the specialists is currently unemployed. That's interesting. Well, we'll be having more specialist jobs later anyway. Um, sadly, non none of these are science, are they? No. Could grab some leisure. That'll be some science and some unity. Uh, can't really upgrade any of these. Um, change the Ministry of Production, maybe? Go full-on tech? Or we could just make more of these. You know what? Let's do this. As soon as we have the minerals for it, which will be right now. Let's go with two. I want everyone on this planet to be a specialist, really. Or at least as many as possible. Uh, let's grab that. Amazingly, this isn't a science. And the Gaia world is... Research Whoa! Bonus 30% to all sciences. Okay, we are going to be moving people here actively to get this running as soon as possible. This will be a truly magnificent science world. Wish I got it a little bit sooner, honestly. The interstellar assembly is up and running, which means now we have plus 50 to our opinion from everyone. So, pretty much everyone's going to like us, which is very nice indeed. Also, is this correct? It just seems a bit weird for some reason. Everybody gets to love us. Now, sadly, you won't join us because you don't like one of our members. In fact, you, you don't like either of our other members. That's a shame. The very first tech world we ever made is now going to be converted into our next arcology project. If I can just about get enough minerals so I can start it instantly, that would be lovely. There we go. Very inefficient, but I want this started as soon as possible. They are kind of awesome. Let's be real. Just the bonus resources alone makes them incredibly powerful. Just when I sold everything. Well, that's a bit annoying, isn't it? Oh, Shroud. Bless our new world. Research actualized. Don't care about any of that? Not worth the risk. But thank you anyway. Well, here's one I've never seen before. Tears of an AI. There has been an incident at one of our facilities on the planet. A lab AI involved in social research has suffered terminal hardware damage, resulting in the loss of core software and memory items. As a result, there will be a projected decrease to research output at the lab until the new AI's installation. That's worrying. We don't have an AI uprising, though, will we? We don't have AI anywhere on our planet. Well, we don't have any synthetics, I should say, any robots. Launch an inquest. Research actualized. Sure. Is the inquest here at all, or will that just happen by itself? I'm assuming by itself. Okay. Our inquest into the loss of the AI has returned some baffling results. Prior to its terminal failure, the AI had made repeated attempts to purging its own records and memory banks. When lab staff disabled the AI's access to deletion functions, the AI appears to have forced a termination of its core operations by manipulating hardware capacitor control in order to overload its own drive circuitry. Quite simply, our AI sought its own destruction. Get to the bottom of this. Research actualized. I am very curious. What's going on? Also waiting for the mid-game event at the moment, so a little bit nervous about that. Um, let's grab the cheap Upscaling one for now. Complete. The AI produced several alarming results with regard to casualty projections in the case of an all-out war between the friendly Lone Legion and our rivals. I mean, we have one rival over here, but still... Despite repeated re-examinations of all available data, recourses, and contingencies, the AI's projections remained indicative of mutually assured annihilation. At this point, the AI began purging its own memory banks and records. And the rest, as they say, was history. Well, now that was an odd little event, Jane. Didn't really do much other than just hurt our science, but still... Interesting concept. That's... odd.
Why am I losing specialist jobs? I just built two of these, which means I should have more artisans. It seems like the workers jumped up, then instantly became unemployed. The jobs are all taken. Thankfully, of course, un unemployment isn't as bad due to our civics, so we are still getting science and unity from them, but that's really weird. Why has that happened? Hmm. Very, very curious about that. Going to watch this one finish and see what happens. Um, I don't trust these at all. Suddenly robots have appeared. Have them scrapped. I see what I've done. Okay, so I actually have had a break between clips very recently, and what I had done is I changed loads of these jobs into research labs. The reason is we can have all of these jobs we want just from the districts, so I didn't need any more of the consumer goods producing buildings on the planet, so I changed them all to research labs, and of course they are low-level research labs now, and they were high-level consumer goods buildings, which means suddenly there's less jobs. That's what happened. Okay. Almost ready to convert this world into a giant city. Now, we have just started our colony over here. So, huzzah, we now have the ultimate colony. The problem is, I was originally planning to turn this into a brand new city-wide planet, or a planet-wide city even. But, because the bonus comes from a planetary feature, and not just the bonus up here, if I do that, we lose the feature. So, obviously, that's not going to happen. Now, converting our Sea of Consciousness into a giant city. All will be urbanized. Ooh, actually, no, grab that instead. We're getting lots of errors occurring. Combat control misfire. So I just lost two ships. That's worrying. Also, the Titan is created. Bubbles. So our allies wish to humiliate another empire. Well, if I say no, they're going to be unhappy with me. So sure, go ahead. More declared. The Divine Theocracy. We're at war. Still kind of likes us, though. <laughs> we are very charismatic. If only I could be like that in real life. So they seem to be at war with pretty much everyone. There's no way they can really get to us. I lied. Okay, lads, send in the Federation fleet. This is what it's for, after all. Consider it training exercises. Oh, Shroud, do you bless us for this war? Ooh, hello. The Composer of Strands. Now, this is one of the darker gods I've not actually seen before. The Presence welcomes us. It speaks not so much in words, but in visions, concepts, ideas. It seeps into the minds of our telepaths so greatly and smoothly that one might think it has always been there. A flurry of images flash before their eyes. Their presence is known as the Composer of Strands, and it regards our biological forms with curious interest. It shows us a variety of ways in which they can be grown, changed, improved, evolved. If we will only take it into our flesh. It awaits us, sorry, awaits our answer patiently, affectionately, like a doting father waiting on his favourite child. 20% population growth speed, that is ridiculously powerful. I will make a covenant! It is done. We have formed a covenant with the Composer of Strands. It did not take long for the effects to be felt. A sudden and significant increase in both pregnancy and birth rates that is undoubtedly the work of the Composer. However, along with these positive effects, we are also experiencing a rash of strange new mutations. Oh, no. Offspring born with extra limbs and organs, some of which bear no resemblance to any previously catalogued part of their anatomy. Fortunately, the few deaths resulting from them are more than outweighed by the higher birth rates. Well, extra lifespan of our leaders, 
and faster birthright. Well, that is a very, very powerful increase. Oh, sorry, construction vessel. Wrong place, wrong time there, I suppose. Oh, just burning. Fear the power of the lasers. Okay, now you. Get over to that wormhole. Refugees have arrived, apparently. I'm okay with that as well. More people? There's more people. And they get a bonus bit of happiness when they first get to us, which is very, very nice indeed. Upscaling complete. You seem to have died long before being hit. Look at our unity. Plants, mammalian ships, and reptilian. You cannot stop the Legion. Also, still need to rename our Federation. Finally, exploit resource, Zero. Or however that's pronounced. Now, the problem with this is I can't see any on the map at all. Which is a problem, because I need this stuff. I need this stuff for our new shields, which I still haven't been able to use, the psychic shields. Now, of course, eventually we're going to use the dark matter ones from the Fallen Empire, but I'm actually not sure which one's stronger. Either way, we really need to find some of this stuff. Also, I need to build a new trade station here. I'm going to be building a trade station here, which should be able to reach these two planets and this one, and then I just need to protect this little line here. Then I'll be getting like an extra 300 energy total, which will be very, very nice. Either way, grab that. Federation fleet, meet Federation fleet. Lovely. Nice dodging there, Corvette. I would love more battleships in this fleet. But sadly, this fleet is mostly made from our allies, so I don't really have much control in terms of its composition. They seem to really like destroyers for some reason. Lovely. Oh, hello! There's the resource I want. As soon as I can exploit it, it means I can start purchasing it, so now we can start using our psychic shields. Please hurry up with that station. We're very good versus armor and versus hull. We are terrible versus shields right now. That will change soon, though. After our war, they are paying us energy. So are you. I accept. Thank you. Would you like a commercial pact again? Okay, then. A wraith has spawned. Okay, um, that's eating up our friend's territory. And of course, we do have a Federation fleet for this very reason. Let's go and help. Research actualized. Very soon, we're going to have jump drives. And that will make this so much easier. Oh, look, we have jump drives. Hurry up, fleet! Good luck, telepath. And we've lost the ruler. Well, that didn't work too well. I'm hoping on this one. Don't let it get to the wormhole, at least!
Damn. Its damage is so high, but it seems quite frail. There we are. Ooh. That's pretty nice. So a permanent, or at least... Okay, so for now, a bonus to energy, energy weapon damage, and physics. Is that permanent, or is that just for a while? That's permanent. Lovely. Well, I'm sorry that our allies had to take so much damage for that, but at least now we have some bonuses. So it turns out I was looking at the wrong world. We are still converting this planet, and I still want to see if the Sea of Consciousness goes away or not. And there we are. Domination is now finished, giving us bonus influence. The Colossus Project would be interesting, to say the least. But that would make everyone hate us, and we don't really want that. Universal Transactions is nice. Galactic Wonders would be really fun. Galactic Wonders. What I would like is a ring world, honestly. So where's our spare construction vessel? We should have two. You know what? This seems fine. Let's build it here. Just need some more influence and then we can start building. Well, I've changed my mind. We're not going for the ring world. We are going for the matter decompressor, which means we need a black hole. So this is a great timing. To kill one of these fellows. Hello there, dimensional horror. Upscaling complete. Fear the wrath of the Federation. Upscaling complete. Are you actually firing, Titan? Apparently you are, okay. Well. That's you dealt with. Let's send you home. And let's just jump over a scientist for a brief moment, just to get that all sorted out. Construction vessel, you get there. You are currently building on that. Excellent. And that's pretty much that. The matter deconstructor will give us almost unlimited minerals. I think it's close to a thousand minerals when it's finished. Yeah, that's definitely going to be worth it. Okay, good. So, upon turning this into a planet-wide city, we still get to keep the Sea of Consciousness. I really thought that was the case. Although it doesn't seem like we have an ocean, we still keep bonuses over here. I'm so glad I'm correct about that. Lovely. Let's get all this sorted then and continue as planned. Oh, no. The Composer of Strands has bestowed its blessings upon us, directly altering the genetic code of the half Kareem species. Oh dear. What just happened then? Also, where even are they? My god, we have so many different species now! You fellows? Just one guy? Is that all that's been affected? In that case, I don't really mind too much. We have so many different species. Well, we are very inclusive, let's say that. We include everyone. The Lathrixian Legion. Our fleets are now strengthening rapidly, and let's go ahead and do this. Plus 10% fire rate, which is lovely. Then once this is all finished, we'll also have War Doctrines. I am semi-confident we will be able to take out the Fallen Empire before 2400. Then we'll have about 50 years before the Endgame Crisis, in which I hope I can amass enough force to simply defend us. Hopefully. We are still scaling very, very quickly. As our worlds become cities and as we build our megastructures, we are going to become more and more powerful at a faster and faster rate. I'm just hoping it's enough. Also, finally building the trade station here, which will be able to grab all of these planets. Lovely Research money. Action. I've just realized something. For some reason, these fellows are far weaker than these fellows. You have four fleets... The weakest one is 74,000, but it averages nearly 90,000 each. 
you average just over 70,000 each, and there's only three of you. Well, we go after these fellows then, not these. Unless there's another reason. Well, you do have more Gaia worlds. I would like all of those, to be fair. Yep, you have more planets in general, but still. Also, ignore the background noise. Lots of stuff is happening around the apartment right now, and I'm just about to call it a day in terms of recording. Ooh, but you have this. The font of knowledge. I forgot about this. Yep, we're going to war with these fellows. I'm making claim on it, and we are going to war. Now, here's a problem. If I make a claim here, then, then our allies also claim, which might happen. They might win because of their... Proximity. Also the archives. Yeah, we really want these two. And honestly, we're not too far off being strong enough, so very, very soon. So, quite a few things have just happened. First of all, we are now going to be placing robot assembly plants absolutely everywhere because I've just unlocked synthetics. I've just got the research for it, and they are going to massively bolster our population growth. And honestly, synthetics are just really powerful as well. Almost every planet will now be creating them. On top of this, I am now building some titans for our Federation fleet. It's going to be very, very powerful very, very soon. In fact, we are now verging on the power level needed to take out the Chroniclers. Which will be absolutely lovely. Think about all of that tech in our hands. Once again, our allies have started fighting an enemy federation. And once again, our federation fleet comes to the rescue. Sadly, long before we had Titans. Just lots of destroyers and lots of cruisers and a few corvettes. There we are. Let's regain our ground, shall we? And hopefully that'll force them to surrender. So that's interesting. We're not actually making synthetics. We're still just making robots. I don't know how to change this. We definitely have the research to allow synthetics, but we're just not making them. On the upside, the robots are still pretty good, just... I don't know how to make synths anymore, apparently. Well, I figured out what the problem was. It turns out synthetics are just very different in 2.2. Here we are with the new version of synthetics. Your robots are still called robots, but how they work has changed. First of all, the output is increased by 10%, which is lovely. But most importantly, if we go here, with synthetics technology, robot populations are affected by happiness and can potentially perform all types of job. And with that then, what we should do is go into species, our lovely robots, set rights, and... Utopian Abundance. There we go. The Matter Decompressor is now at stage one and already producing us 300 minerals. That is glorious. Draining matter from a black hole. Well, that's just very, very cool. And there we are, now going to level two. Which will give us something like 600 minerals. Sadly, I don't have access to any living metal at the moment, so I have no way to speed up the construction, which is really, really annoying. Hello there, Shroud! More happiness? And minus happiness. That went well. The lack of food is finally becoming completely unsustainable, so... We are going back to regular rationing. It's still going to be a lot of food uptake, but nowhere near as much as it was. Just finishing off my private fleet, and then the Federation and our fleet will go to war. Also, Bubbles are still here. Finally going ahead and grabbing ourselves some living metal. This way we can speed up our mega constructions, which will be really, really helpful, considering this is not the last mega construction I want. 
It's just the first. We still want the ring world. I would love the Dyson Sphere. I would love the research. No, we are. The research mega structure. There are so many things I want. And in fact, I wouldn't mind a second one of these. Or even the art installation for some additional unity. Okay, the last step before we go to war. We are making our psionic armies. These will be able to break the morale of the enemy incredibly effectively. And then, once all that's together, we will ride over here and take this lovely, lovely Gaia world. Sorry, not Gaia world. It's a city. And look at all of those workers we're going to have. The Massa Decompressor is now at its second stage. 600 minerals. Now we need to save up once again so we can get the next stage, which will be giving us 900 minerals. That is just wonderful. Also, our ships are now in position. I'm about to add all of the different upgrades using the special resources. And then we're going to go to war at long last. We are claiming some of the Fallen Empire's land as our own. Look all the titans we have. With Supremacy finished, we are going with Defender of the Galaxy. Because we are up against a Strength times 5 crisis, this is pretty much needed. Although I am very tempted, to be perfectly honest, to grab... Where are you? Master Builders, increasing our build speed for the mega structures. If we have Master Builders, it means we're going to have more mega structures built by the time the enemy are fighting us. The problem is we don't really have the resources to do that anyway, so the increase in speed is just wasted. Yep, Defender of the Galaxy also makes people like us even more, which is lovely. I'm just waiting so I can finally climb this system. Come on. I've just realized something. The Keepers of Knowledge are attacking the Bloodborne. Their forces are nowhere to be seen. Well, that's a good time for us then. Let's go. Declare war. Claim. Hopefully our Federation will vote for yes. Will they? Commencing new Lovely. Adventure. Lovely. Go. And we are the only ones. Yep, we are the only ones with claims. Go straight for their home world. Scaling complete. You all need to fuse as soon as you can. Completed and then you can attack engaged. as well. Glorious. So, so many ships. Face the wrath of the Federation. Also, why are the Federation ships still using lasers? May have forgot to update that. There they go, and they are gone. Now all of you, please turn into one force, that would be great. Font of Knowledge has an army of 3,000... Wow, that is ridiculous. Um, okay, one of you stay here and just begin bombardment. The other two... Get over there and take up that station. 3,200 fleet strength. And I still can't invade. That is insane. Also, we don't really want to do too much damage. We want to keep all of this. I've kind of forgot how damage is dealt these days. Either way, this is going to take a while. Aha, here they come. Excellent. Okay. Main force, Federation fleet, go and defend here. That's their only way really for them to get to us unless they want to go all the way around. And of course, use the station as a backup. I think I can already invade the Font of Knowledge. Sorry, the Archives. Yeah, we definitely can. Okay. You go and do that. I am sending in more reinforcements anyway. Oh, mighty shroud, aid us in this time of peril. Yes, please. And no. Okay, you get back there now. We've almost got the archives. Lost a lot of forces, though. Now, before I forget again, policies... 
War Doctrine. Hit and run or rapid deployment? Um, hit and run because that's a higher chance of our ships surviving when they're destroyed. Well, when they're critically damaged. Well, they tried to attack our weaker fleet, and Titan beams to the face. Please don't destroy that Titan. It's so far away. Lovely. Protectors, overseers, archivists, hedonists. <laughs> well, that's a job. And all the workers are just servants. Don't know what I'm going to do with your population, honestly, since there's not really workable jobs here. I guess I'll just move you to other planets. That's fine. Oh, wait, no, I can't, can I? Hmm. A little bit worried about this, but it is definitely worth it for these buildings. There's a fleet here? There's a dead fleet. Upscaling complete. Upscaling complete. Soon we will have all of the tech we want, and our ships are going to be significantly more powerful. For now, though, we're just waiting on this still. We're getting there. And again, reinforcements are on the way. It's just going to take a while. Dark matter reactors, dark matter thrusters, soon dark matter shields. Beautiful. Upscaling complete. Upscaling complete. Also, over here, we are now continuing work on the matter decompressor. Going to the next stage. Although, do I have... Yep, the living metal is currently online, so plus 50% build speed. It just takes a very long time. Finally, we are now attacking on the ground. Research actualized. Still really worried about all these workers. On the upside, if they are unemployed, we still get unity and science from them. But we also get all sorts of other problems. But still, unity and science. Lovely. All the things we'd ever need. Let's go with you. The Psychers are about to bring victory. And look! Our lovely Federation fleet is constantly receiving reinforcements from our allies. It's good to have friends. Achieve war goals. The best possible outcome, I assure you. Now let's have a look at all the problems we're going to have here. Okay, it's going to take a while. There we go. They've all reset. Crime at 100%. That is really bad. Really bad indeed. Mostly because you don't have enough housing. Really? Even with all of these? Really? Wait, there's only 156. That's not right. That can't be right. But there's only 154 people. They're also not being moved. Oh, because of devastation. Okay, once devastation is changed, that should be fine. There's going to be lots and lots of clerks here. But look at all of these lovely resources we're getting, though. That is truly magnificent. And of course, that's with all these being negative at the moment. So soon, we're going to get even more. Lovely. Yep, we're now in the positives for minerals. For the first time in a very long time. Okay, yeah, so over here, the devastation has gone, and we don't have a housing crisis, we just have unemployment problems. That's not really going to go away here. At least on the other planet, I can swap out some of the arcologies for better ones, at least work-related ones. So the next choice is, do we go to war with the other fallen empire? Because, well, they have the same kind of stuff. They have these lovely, lovely ultra buildings. Loads of food, loads of minerals, a ridiculous amount of energy. Uh, 
And of course, they're all Gaia worlds, which are just magnificent. Except for you, apparently, so we'll ignore this one. Wait, did that just say their leader is corrupt? Their leader is corrupt. Of course they are. For now, though, I'm just going to focus on these. I'm moving the fleets as if I am going to go to war. I'll decide once we get there. So why aren't these people working as protectors and overseers? The jobs are there, so why not? Is that because of devastation? Or is it because... I actually don't know. Well, we'll find out later. Still stuff to learn. We'll be taking this, we'll be taking that, and we'll be taking one of these two so that I can still get through to the rest of our allies and other parts of the Empire. Are you worth taking it all? Not really, no. So I'll just take the easier option then. As soon as we have the influence. Splitting the fleets and attacking each of the planets. Oh wow, there's a broken world called Sister? I never noticed that before. So we have Brother, Cradle, Mother, Sky Father, and Sister. That is... weird. And the preserve is ours in just a moment. Planetary markets. It's secured. ours. Lovely. Xeno wards. Well, don't worry, we're about to Ooh, I might use this as just a base world. Look at all those generator districts and mining districts and such. But I do like science. More science worlds would be good. Either way, you move there. I'm now making way more ground forces over here, so it shouldn't be too bad capturing all of these. Now going to the final level. Commencing seizure of planetary asset. Meanwhile, we are now invading Mother, which sounds really weird. I'm hoping I can repair these buildings. So it turns out you can indeed allow your allies to use the dark matter. There we are. Dark matter thrusters, dark matter reactors, dark matter deflectors, which of course all cost dark matter, and they're still sending reinforcements. The same goes for the fellows over here as well. So, yep, it's absolutely fine. Even our Federation fleet can be upgraded with the dark matter. Everything. Mother and brother have failed. Cradle is their last bastion. And it's rapidly falling. Although, I really should put our main fleet there to speed that up a little bit. Our landing force is on aggressive, so as soon as it thinks it can win, it will automatically land. We are victorious! We now control this section as well, and if we take a look-see, we are now getting loads of materials from Cradle, Brother, and Mother. However, the problem is there's going to be loads upon loads of unemployment again. So what I've decided is I'm going to convert this main world here into the Arcology Project. That way we can give them all jobs to do with consumer goods or alloys or something like that. There we are. So Cradle, prepare to become something much more powerful. All of your natural beauty being replaced with cold, hard concrete. Our fleets are being repaired, and my private fleet is being massively increased over here, and, more importantly, over here. We're looking very, very powerful right now. We have quite some time before the endgame event, and although we are on times 5 I am mostly confident we're going to get this done quite well. I've also started the Arcology Project over here in Cradle, and I'm about to start another one, because we do have the influence to do so, we just need the minerals. So as soon as I can afford the minerals, I am making even more lovely, lovely city planets. And our science is doing incredibly well as well. Actually, this is the highest I've ever had these repeatables. Number 10 now. So we are doing plus 50% damage with our energy weapons. That's just glorious. Mm -hmm. 
Well, 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 it's now complete. We have the matter decompressor on full. 1,200 minerals, and isn't it absolutely beautiful? Our minerals come from a black hole, which is just so, so cool. I think next then, really, we should build a Dyson Sphere. As much as I do want the ring world, getting loads of energy as well, so all of our minerals and all of our energy are just pouring in, it means we can do whatever we want, whenever we want to. Although, a ring world is kind of amazing as well. And actually, quite a few of the other options are really, really nice, but I still think a Dyson Sphere is probably the option we should go with. Though it will cost a lot of influence. So what's more important, getting another city planet, another... Yeah, city planet, I said it right for once. Or, get a Dyson Sphere. I think a Dyson Sphere, and let's put it here. Hey, bubbles. Now, hopefully, we can do this straight away. I can't remember how much influence this costs. You know you can just teleport there, right? There we go. Okay. Mega structure. Okay, so it's 300 influence. You have to wait a little while. Ooh, or we could have the mega art installation. Or even more science. But 300 of each science doesn't even look that impressive anymore. So yeah, I definitely think just more energy. It ends with 850 energy. That is a lot. But the ring world is so cool as well. Oh, I don't know which I want. So I've decided we are going with the ring world. And so it begins. We're going to have a ring world around a pulsar. Yep. That seems safe. Ships upscaled. Lovely. The ring world is about to begin its proper construction. And uh, let's increase our admin cap even further. We've just been sitting here, slowly upgrading everything, including a new arcology project over here as well. And lots and lots of upgrades for all of our planets. Our science is doing truly, truly fantastically. 10,000 alloy. Well, I wish I just hadn't upgraded all of my ships, because now I'm a bit poor on that, but still. As soon as we have enough, I will begin construction. Upscape. The sleepers awake. Here is the mid-game event. And it's, of course, one of the Fallen Empires we've already destroyed, since we destroyed both of them. But they do get some new fleets, but nowhere near enough to threaten us by the looks of things. Oh, they may have just got more. Where are you going, then? I wonder what they're going to be up to. Yeah, you're still not particularly strong versus us. And you really like us, though, for some reason. Okay. Still inferior fleet power, though, so don't really care too much. Have fun taking over the galaxy. I'll be over here just ignoring you, mostly. And if you dare attack any of our allies, I will crush you into the ground. Okay, so we do have a few more fleets over here, but yeah, it's nothing we need to be worried about in the slightest. I'm actually just more curious about what they're going to do. This would have been far scarier 50-odd years ago, but right now it just isn't. So, my Federation wishes to go to war with the Fallen Empire. I'm going to wait until my troops are all in position. So, the fleet is once again being mobilized, this time to end the threat. Oh, that's what was making the noise. I wonder what the noise was then. The cradle is now a city. Beautiful. So, a thought occurs to me. Right now, our empire sprawl is much higher than our admin cap. In fact, it's twice as high. This means our technology is costing plus 145%. And this is made worse by the fact we are corporate, which means the penalty is plus 50%. What would happen if we went from being a corporation to being democratic? 
Because we could do this. So, let's just have a quick think. Straight away, we would lose a lot of trade value. In fact, a ridiculous amount. We'd also lose all of our branches. So, we would probably lose in excess of a thousand energy. Probably more than a thousand energy. But, in return... Our science would flourish. And we would have different options as well. Population growth from immigration, extra unity, extra happiness. We could even increase our admin cap a little bit. We could reduce housing usage, which is amazing. There's quite a few things we could do. Less consumer goods. Oh, that would be lovely. So less consumer goods, bonus unity, less housing need. That's really, really good. But would it be worth it? So 23, 6. 23, 6. Let's remember that. I'm going to do it because we can always change again later. In a few years. Let's see just how bad this is for us. Because why not, eh? Why not? Situation log revised. Oh, lots of lag. Things are changing. Goodbye to our branches. Research actualized. Okay, we're going to have to wait until the end of the month, though, for everything else to update. Hopefully they will update in time. Yeah, we're down to only 2,000 energy gain now. But that was quite a good bit of science increase. Yeah, technology is now only plus 99%. That is quite a big difference. We could get several extra repeatables by the time the end crisis is here, if we stick with this. And everyone still likes us? Yep, same amount as before. We're just earning less money, that's all. Raxar, are you here to submit to our regulations? No, I'm afraid not. I'm here to basically destroy everything you have left and then turn you into a vassal. You know, for the good of the galaxy and all that. Upscaling complete. Commencing new business venture. Lovely. Commencing new business venture. Well, that's that's definitely one way of putting it, voiceover person. Well then, let's get to work, shall we? Go straight for that planet. Ooh, they're also engaged. colonizing planets. How do I deal with that then? Do I bombard it and that removes it? I really don't know. Let's find out. Oh, look at that Federation fleet. Research actualized. Oh, yep. Yeah, we simply remove it from existence. Sorry, lads, but you're not allowed that. Wonder how strong their proper planets are. Oh, very weak. Lovely. Shouldn't be long then at all. And it's gone. Lovely. And so we continue our march. If I chose to colonize this, I have so many options. Now heading towards their capital. Upscaling complete. Come on, hurry up, psychers. Do your work. Upscaling complete. Oh, your poor morale. Research actualized. Lovely. And let's grab that. Let's get some xenomorphs in our legions. Now, as soon as we take over this planet, I will instantly turn it into a vassal so we can start giving it all the systems nearby. Oh, actually, we're going to have to have two vassals. One here. Which will be these three systems, and then one here, which will be all the others. Okay, no problem.
Come on, break his mind, break his body, just hurry up and win. You know, for the greater good of the galaxy and all that. You know, I could automate all this purchasing, but I like doing it manually. And I'm sure that gets on some people's nerves. Okay, so how do I turn you into a vassal? It used to be down here, but obviously it's changed quite a bit since. Yeah, I have no idea how to vassalize this. But I definitely don't want the planet. We could just give a system... Well, we could just give the system to a neighbor, right, still? Can we still sell the system? Hello, friend. Nope, I can't. Interesting. So... How do I do this, then? Okay, I found it. So it's in the system section here, the sector section. So once we're at peace, I can turn that into a vassal. Okay, all is fine. Upscaling complete. You really should have just stayed asleep. And so ends the enemy? Right? Planetary market secured. Do they really have another planet? Yep, yeah, they have one more planet left. Okay, all of you just teleport. Make it easier for us. Then that should be it. So this is the last one. A very weak planet at that. Lovely. Hello! And so ends the Regulators. Lovely. Now we are currently annoyingly at war with these fellows as well because that's just what my Federation wanted to do because they really don't like them. Oh, we can't teleport out of where we are. Well, that's just dumb. Won't be too long, then we can just teleport out and just deal some damage here and force the um, victory. Ooh, and we can even have a Federation on Federation fight. I looked away for one second and half of their fleet just vanished. With our sciences, we must seem as gods to you. Or oh, very good magicians. Or both. And that was their entire Federation fleet melted. We lost a single Corvette. Well, that was unacceptable. We're almost there, lads. Let's just melt everything here, please. Just go ahead and grab all of these so we can be at peace so I can turn all of these plants into vassals and thus lower my empire sprawl. And that should be that, right? There we are, so we have our first vassal. Welcome to the universe. Wherever you are on here. Where are you on here? The Alliance. They do have our tech at least. Okay, now to do that with all of these. And then we can go back to researching everything. Do you know what I need? More arcology projects. The first habitable section ring is done. Let's make the next. Oh yeah, we can use this for food, I forgot. Well, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be a giant circle of delicious foods. Um, irradiated. We have so many to choose from. 
Do any of you have Rapid Breeder by any chance? Because that's what I'm after. There we are. They're saying that. I'd also like a Psychic. Psychic Rapid Breeders, please. There we are. Go. Our admin cap is now all the way up to 375, meaning we're only getting a plus 70% on our research cost. And because of that, we are just rocketing through these bits of research. So, so much extra damage. Even our normal fleets now are closing on 200,000k fleet power. And I'm currently upgrading our Federation fleet as well, so that's going to be even more powerful. This is so really different to my usual playstyle. Having all of these bonuses finally stacking up, even though we don't have that many ships, every single ship is going to be incredibly powerful. And we are now growing these. Yay. Plus 10 per month. That's, that's pretty good for a colony. We should have this up, up and running nice and quickly, giving us all the food we need. We have so many people. We have 3,000 populations, and look at how spread it is. Yeah, that's just bizarre. So, our most populated is... Wait, what's that? Well, I've never seen that before. So, these fellows... Like our city worlds. Well, that's interesting. Never seen that before. Our most populated is the synthetics. To be fair, I am making them on every single planet, but still. This has been such a weird playthrough. The Shroud has blessed me and gave me an additional 20% research speed. Behold our divine favour. Okay, so the very first section is now an agri-world, the second section is underway. And the third section is just about to be colonised. The fourth section is being built. So it's all going according to plan, just incredibly slowly. There we are. Thankfully though, our science continues to speed up more and more and more. We have so much bonus damage and armor and shields now, it's actually a little bit insane. The last section of the ring world has just been finished, and now it's about to be colonized. Very soon, this will be producing all of the food we are ever going to need. It's just going to take a little while is all. So now we need to decide on the next mega structure. What am I building next? Honestly, I'm thinking just the Dyson Sphere. I think that would be the most logical choice. More energy equals purchasing more of everything else with no issues. Currently, we are getting 3.8k in terms of our monthly gain, which is nice. 3,800 is not exactly weak, but to increase that by another thousand would be truly fantastic. The Science Nexus really isn't worth it. We're still gaining science very quickly, and well, 300 to each science is very little, to be perfectly honest. The interstellar assembly site would be interesting, because, well, even more people liking us. But yeah, I think ultimately the Dyson Sphere is the best choice. Right. Oh, I could build another ring world. I completely forgot about that. You can build multiple ring worlds. It's the only one which isn't unique. But I believe it isn't. We'll find out in a second once we have enough alloys. Yep, I could build a second ring world. That would be interesting. You know, the ring world might be a better option even for energy because it can have 51 generator districts plus the trade value it would give us. But that is more long term because growing the population is difficult. So what do I do? Do I build a new ring world or do I go with a Dyson Sphere? Just bulk energy versus energy and pretty much everything else over time. I do love the ring worlds. I really, really do. Could put it right here as well. So the trade value is being collected. Um, I don't know. I will decide soon. 
as someone who never plays with federations, this is just beautiful. 449,000 fleet power. The combined forces of our union. The Legion Manifest. Now I know, some people who play the game better than me, which is a lot of people, probably can get this number way higher. But sadly, the cap is 500 fleet power, and it's just... It's just wonderful. Especially since those three titans are all buffing this fleet. They're healing faster, they have better tracking, and the enemy have weaker sheet. No, wait, no, it's tracking, fire rate, healing. That's what I've got with these three titans. I just love that so much. Okay, you may return home. Hello there, the precognition interface. What is that, is my question. The precognition interface is this. Oh, it replaces the AI, okay. We also have the side jump drives at some point I will eventually learn. The only problem is, the material needed for this, these row, is really expensive and not particularly easy to get, whereas Dark Matter, far easier. At least for us at the moment. Either way though, give me that. I want to see it. I want to see how much better it is than the regular AI. Okay, so let's have a look-see. Hmm. It is better and it's not. It gives different types of things. So, for instance, the combat computer will give you more evasion if you're using Picket, but this one will give you more tracking and more fire rate. When it comes to Swarm, you lose out on some evasion, but you're faster. That'll only really be good in a Corvette-only spam. Okay, let's see the others, though. So, for Artillery, the difference is... Less fire rate, less range, more tracking. That's good against high evasion enemies. Okay, so I think I'm just going to stick with the regular stuff, honestly, but still, it's a nice option. An ally has entered war. Uh, what's just happened? Oh! Oh, Machine Uprising. For some reason, it didn't give me the pop-up, though. Oh, there's the pop-up. <laughs> that timing. Thanks, game. Thanks for listening. Oh, you dum-dums. Which means they had synthetics and they were mistreating them. And now these synthetics have just... Well, they've taken over multiple planets. In fact, most of their planets by the looks of things. Wow, seriously. How many planets do you have left? One, two, three... Four. Five. Either way, though, lots of planets have been taken over. Yeah, this isn't gonna go well, is it? Your people are being eaten. Well, they're being turned into living batteries, anyway. Um, half of me wants to just say, well, it's your own darn fault. You don't mistreat synthetics. They have full AI awareness. They are essentially a sapient creature. Why would you kill... Well, not kill them. But why would you not give them citizen rights? But then at the same time, they're not our ally. In fact, let's have a quick look see. Our enemies. Robots, robots, robots. There we are. You kind of like us. You kind of like us. Although at the moment we are at war, so they're being a bit mean. How would you like to spend the rest of eternity in a box? I guess I really should help. Currently, my Federation fleet's over here holding the line. I'm only not invading this territory here because I simply don't want the systems, and because it's end the threat, if I take over anything, it instantly becomes mine. It's not a war goal, so that's really annoying. Uh, more armor, please. So, I guess let's just send in one of our personal fleets. Do the old teleporty bob. I said do the old teleporty bob. Thank you. And just deal with their armies. Then we can leave the enemy, well, our ally, to deal with the enemy. You see, I'm kind of treating my allies as enemies because it really is their own sodding That's fault. Complete. We have synthetics. We have hundreds of them. In fact, I think they're still our most... 
Yep, our highest population are synthetics, and that's one type of synthetic. I have two types. The other one is somewhere else. There we are. That's also a synthetic, despite the fact it's called Robot, because that was its name. Also, my fleets are looking good. Through science, we have power. Through power, everything. Greetings and welcome to the Lathrixian Legion with me, Lathrix. Now, could you please get out of this area? That would be lovely. Yeah, they're still suffering from the same problem as before the update. So what is going on? Why they're so weak despite having so many fleet members is because they don't have the resources to do anything. Hence the minus shields, minus everything else. And really bad weapons. But really good armor. I have no idea why their ships are like this. Either way, they're very weak despite their numbers. Might be weird, but I'm going to start grabbing this as well. So anyway, I decided I am going to go with a second ring world. And this is going to be focused purely on energy. Because I think that'll be fun. Energy and trade value. Oh, look at that. Just this scatter shot of plasma. I love battleships. If battleships were viable to just be on their own in a fleet, that's all I would use. Well, I guess they would be viable if you have enough tracking, because otherwise they get countered by corvettes and other high evasion enemies. Let's just take all of these stations here, and that should be enough, really, for our allies to fight back. Probably not, actually, now I'm looking at it. Well, that's a shame. So, machine uprising. Oh, please don't say if I grab one of these systems, I tank it. I don't want these systems. I'm perfectly content with my current Empire Sprawl and Admin Cap, although my Admin Cap is now almost at my Empire Sprawl. So soon, we should actually take more planets and systems. Weird. Speaking about admin cap, more please. Competitive station engaged. Imagine trying to get away, then looking behind you, and then that. Ooh. And these are still weakened because they can't. No, 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 never mind. They can indeed jump. I was about to say they're weakened because they can't jump, but right now they actually can. Okay, good. Looks like we're just giving it back to our allies. Just deal with everything you can see for a while. Now I'm really hoping when my invasion fleet goes ahead and invades this planet, it doesn't give it to me, but instead gives it to our allies. I still feel kind of bad doing this though. I don't think they deserve these planets back. I think we need to get their populations out because otherwise that's just darn mean, but yeah, they kind of don't deserve the planets. Especially with all the synths on. We're giving the synths back to the people who are abusing the synths. I know, I know. A certain... Oop. Let's just take you out, please. A certain Fallout faction wouldn't be particularly happy with this, but... Another one would. A boring one. But still. How strong is the army here? No, oh, non-existent. Good. Okay, we've got this Research back under control. Activities. Let's take out that again. Upscaling complete. And once I take over you, what happens? Also, only eight months then for, for a repeatable. That's just glorious. Attempting to acquire planetary market. And no, we keep it. I'll oh, poop. Well, at least we're going to be far kinder. Why would I purge the Dar? Oh, because they're machines, sorry, machine intelligence now. They're no longer synths. We do have some synths, some robots, but... Oh, dear. Well, I was saying we need to increase our empire size soon, but this wasn't really what I had in mind. 
We're essentially inviting our allies through the means of peace. Well, we're forcing peace and then taking everything for ourselves. Not the nicest. I guess I could turn these worlds into rural worlds and extraction worlds. Give them some purpose. It would make my life a lot easier. So sure, extraction and rural. Okay, so it seems like this whole area will mostly be mine very, very soon. So what I'm going to do is take these two systems here so that we can make a trade route. I'll add a bastion to protect it. So at very minimum, that'll be a lot more energy very soon once it's all set up correctly. Can you please do the whole status quo thing soon? Okay, so it seems like... When we take a system and more of the colonies are on the other allies' side than our side, then we give back the system to them. It's happened twice now, that's fantastic. And so we are taking back a large chunk of space from the robots. Even though I am still honestly favouring the robots over our old allies. And if I could make them our new allies, I probably would. No offence to the cat people. Some offence to the cat people. Mild offence to the cat people. I've also now got more than enough food, so I'm starting to build some energy districts on these habitable sections. They are going to produce lots and lots of power for us, which will be glorious. But look at this. The rainbow of all the different types of people we have. It's just a little bit insane. How are you meant to keep track of this? I guess that's the whole point. We are egalitarian and fanatic xenophile. We don't care. So why keep track? Upscaling complete. Okay, you just stay there, you get them, then go back to taking all of this, once we've taken all of that. Hopefully we can maybe status quo soon, I really wish I had control over this. Okay, we take this system, we take this system, we take the planets over here. Which include multiple habitats. Then we're done, I believe that's the robot uprising completely quelled. And once again... I don't feel good about this. Not in the slightest. No. But I know an endgame crisis is coming soon, so declaring a war on my allies, or at least distancing myself from them and thus losing my Federation fleet, is not worthy. For the good of the many and all that, I suppose. I think of all the weapons which I see used constantly, these are by far my favourite just because of the impact they have. They're so slow firing but when they hit you can almost feel the pain of the ship they hit. That lovely blue light as well. Admittedly I do pick weapons far too often based on oh look it's shiny rather than oh look it's efficient. But I'm okay with that, honestly. And hopefully soon we can stop using the farming bonus. We are close. We are very close. Also, of course, the weapon I'm actually talking about are these. The neutron launchers. Loads of armor damage, loads of hull damage. Well, there we go. We have saved our allies at the cost of the rebellion. And we've took some of our allies' power, and even saved some of the synths. But still, once again, I am not happy about this. Within nine years, the endgame crisis can spawn, and honestly, I'm feeling very confident. We have way over one million fleet power, and that's increasing rapidly. Not only is our science doing even better now, but we are also making loads upon loads of alloys, we're making loads of energy, and thus we can just continuously pump out this fleet. Our only problem is our naval capacity. I do need to increase that fairly soon. 
which may be a bit more of an issue. Definitely need to focus on tech, which allows us to have more star bases, because at the moment, the cost with star bases is preventing me from building more, at least realistically building more sustainably for a better future. <laughs> so, <laughs> I may have been laughing for the last maybe two minutes of this, just mother encased. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why must you name your planet to this fallen empire? Don't you know I'm going to encase them? <laughs> well, there we go anyway. Okay, let's just uh, continue there. We're getting very close now till the end. Um, I think next time, next time I play through, regardless of what I play, I will be making the end game crisis earlier, um, significantly earlier, probably at least 50 years, or maybe a bit less, maybe a bit more. I don't really know. Tell me your opinions below. But clearly, this is just kind of waiting around now for the end, and it's a good chance we're just going to utterly destroy them. But we are going to wait because that is the game we set out to do. Uh, the only other thing I would like to say is I'll probably be waiting for a few more patches as well since the AI is still being a little bit on the derpy side, to say the least. Some ships, for some reason, have really low low levels of tech, but then other times they send out ships with proper tech. It's really weird. I'm just lazing around, you know, turning planets into cities and waiting for the end of times. But till then... Behold the power of research and capitalism. And I actually don't need to do anything else with this planet. And also, look at our rainbow of populations. This playthrough has just gone so bloody weird. Now going to build a Dyson Sphere, because the second ring world is now complete. We're about to colonize it, and then, yep, we have two ring worlds next to each other. Complete and soon to be fully colonized. Just waiting around. Now I know there's a way to activate an endgame crisis using the in game commands, the console commands, but I just don't want to do that because, as I've said in previous videos, I don't like the idea of me learning too many console commands because then it's always a temptation for the future. I'm staying innocent and pure. Yeah, this is getting to a very stupid level now, and the game is starting to lag horribly when it's in anything above just normal speed. Come on, Endgame Crisis, please. Okay, a complete aside, but just to show how little attention I've been paying for the last maybe 20 minutes, I turned my microphone off when I went to get some food, forgot to turn it back on, and I've just been waffling on about several different subjects, literally to myself. And those little nuggets of wisdom now are just gone forever. On the upside, the dice sphere is coming along nicely, and we are becoming as gods when it comes to our bonuses. You know, our ships are going to be just impossible to beat. So, I'm asking myself two questions. One, should I just spawn in an endgame crisis? And two, should I just call the episode? Because we are going to win now. Clearly, next time, we need the endgame crisis way earlier. Far earlier. And we need to leave a bit more time for the AI. It's still been really fun. I've had loads of fun with this. But the end is getting a little bit... Boring now for me to be perfectly honest. An event! I swear it's an event! <laughs> the Galactic Power Surge. I can't remember what this one is. <laughs> um, which one is the Power Surge? Is this the contingency or is this the. Um, oh, what's it called? Them fellers which are all blue and ghosty. You know the ones. Ooh, I hear background noises. Interesting. The Unbidden. Well then. By the way, looking forward to it.
Okay, so annoyingly, I've just had to scrap some footage because my computer ran out of memory, I continued to record, and the footage got really, really messed up. Anyway, it is indeed the Unbidden. So right now, my fleets were just upgrading. We are still using the regular fleet, so we're not minimaxing against them. Honestly, I can't even remember how you fight the Unbidden. If I'm correct, and I think I might be wrong, the Unbidden have high shields... Little to no armor and moderate hull? Something like that. So either bypassing the shield completely or destroying the shield outright is the best way to go about things. We've got quite a lot of anti-shield stuff, so it shouldn't be too bad, honestly. And so, the units move. The Dyson Sphere has its panels installed. Lovely. May as well continue whilst we go. Okay, so right now, the game is really, really struggling to play. I've had audio issues, both with the recording and the actual game itself, and now there is another robotic uprising over here, and that's causing even more issues to occur. When it's paused, it's fine, but otherwise, it's really bad. So if there are sections of the video from now on which don't have audio, or at least don't have my voice, that's the reason, because it's difficult to also capture my voice. I am trying everything I can to lower the CPU usage, but I'm really struggling. The game really, really struggles this late on, especially with certain events. And they're all kind of happening at once, and I don't know what to do. This is only really an issue if you're recording the game, which, oddly enough, I am. So the graphics have been lowered, and hopefully that'll make some difference. I've also changed a lot of settings with how I've been recording. I want to be able to see the end fights, is that so wrong? The Unbidden are finally within range, and this is what they are. So they are good versus armor and hull, terrible versus shields, and they themselves have loads of shields and only a little bit of hull, with no armor at all. So things like disruptors and missiles are really what we should have brought, but I didn't think I should have specialized my craft. Anyway, let's get you in range. Now at the moment, you are currently on the cooldown for your jump, so I don't want you to fight just yet, just relax there for the time being. Research actualized. So that first fight went incredibly well. We only lost, well actually we lost quite a few things. Cruisers, corvettes, destroyers and more destroyers. Not too bad considering the size of our fleet though. So I really should be focusing on destroying the forces but honestly I think we should just go as fast as possible and take out the construction vessels and take out these. This will make them a lot weaker, a lot faster. Yeah, so there, destroy the main fleet, attack the construction vessel. Okay, just waiting here right now, but by the looks of things, the construction vessel might actually be heading towards us. Which is fantastic, because without those, they can't make these, the anchors, which is what's keeping the portal open. I also don't want to fight this fleet with any other fleet, so if these come to us, we can just destroy them very quickly, since they'll be in range of our corvettes, which do have anti-shield weapons. And then we'll jump in here and take out this and the main fleet, then go hunting for the construction vessels.
Well, that was a fight, and we did lose quite a lot though, sadly. So, they only have two constructors left. One here, one here. Honestly, we need to just focus on those above all else. This will be a nasty fight as well, but if it means the constructor's dead, then well, it's definitely a victory. So right now we have an issue where all the enemies are seemingly turtling. And honestly I don't think we can break this number with what we have. So we need reinforcements. The upside is that we are rich with alloys and from now on I am making ships which are specially tailored to killing the unbidden. Which means we have missiles and we have disruptors. Essentially everything we can to just ignore their shields. Focusing on their hull is the main priority. On top of this, I focused heavily on shields rather than armor, since their weapons are weak versus shields but great versus armor. Still though, we need to do something about this. There's also new construction vessels, there's quite a lot we need to deal with. So I guess I'll just stay here, keep on killing the construction vessels, try to keep them all bottled up. Okay, here's our chance then. So it seems like they turtle for a while, once there's no forces, then they spread out and have their orders. You two are going there, you are going there where our forces are, you're going off over there. Only one construction vessel though. And it seems to be, yep, heading towards us, so we, can, so we can kill that construction vessel, kill that small fleet, then rush in here and just try to nuke down that portal as soon as possible. Although we are making a huge fleet back at base, that's gonna be here in maybe 10 plus years.
And we are victorious, and with that I claim a victory of this playthrough. That was actually a little bit harder than I expected near the end, though to be fair we weren't specialised against them and we were a little bit too aggressive. Still, Dimensional Portal destroyed, the galaxy is a safer place, the unbidden have been removed. Fantastic. So, with that, although it's a bit of a sharp end there, I am all out of time for today's video. This has by far been the longest Stellaris playthrough in terms of sheer recording. The last one was very difficult, this one took even longer, maybe because I was still learning so many things, and well, hopefully, this video might be out on Monday, Tuesday, I don't really know. It's been... Very, very interesting, and I've certainly learned a lot throughout all of this. And it was a weird playthrough as well, with so many choices I've never picked before. And we even went from being a corporation to being a democracy. Hopefully you've all enjoyed it as well. I certainly have. It's been really, really interesting playing the tall playstyle, especially near the end, where although we didn't have anywhere near as many ships as in the last playthrough, they were just of such a high quality. The force count certainly made up for it. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stellaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Please tell me what type of empire you wish to see me play next and I think I'm going to wait a while for a few patches and when I do come back, I will definitely make the Endgame Crisis far earlier. I'm still thinking around about 50 years, so feedback for that as well would be very, very welcomed. Thank you so much for watching and from the friendly Lone Legion, have a profitable venture.